hello hello, welcome to the video. Often dubbed the king of the jungle, the lion is one of the largest cats alive today and has the largest skull of modern cats. Famous for its mane on males and the pride and coalition system, lions have been ingrained in human culture to the point it's no wonder they are the face of apex predators of the world. In Sri Lanka there's even statues of lions, some have argued this as more of a cultural memory before the island nation drifted away from India. However, there has been at least one fossilised lion tooth found in Sri Lanka according to 2002's Wild Cats of the World and some of these statues, according to the same source, look very accurate to the actual animal, with only later statues taking on a more stylized look. The Sphinx of Egypt possesses a lion's body and the head of a human, and Egyptian mythology also features a goddess known as Sekhmet, who has the body of a woman and the head of a lioness. In places like England and parts of Europe, the lion was a symbol of power, courage, and dawned numerous flags, shields, armour, and much more. In modern times, lions are now finding themselves plastered on sports teams, the main characters of popular kids' movies, and alongside being a part of the ongoing debate among critically online people that shall not be named. When it comes to size, I've had to rewrite this part multiple times due to differing numbers depending on the source. Gugesberg's book shows results from Colonel R. Minertzagen, who shot five lionesses ranging from 121.2 to 184.5 kilograms, and 14 males ranging from 148.23 to 190.96 kilograms. These results, alongside other weights of animals Minertzagen shot in Kenya, can be found in his book Kenya Diary 1902 to 1906. Luke Hunter in Cats of Africa gives an average for males of 180 to 190 kilograms but states they can get up to 260 kilograms. Females, according to Hunter, are 120 to 130 kilograms, with some getting past 160. Alan Turner's book, The Big Cats and Their Fossil Relatives, lists a weight of 170 kilograms for East African males and 190 kilograms for Southern African males, with an average maximum of 225. According to Luke Hunter's Wild Cats of the World, ones in East African and Central African Sahelian savannas and India are 10-20% to smaller than lions from Eastern African and Southern woodlands on average. The source I agree with the most, however, is Sunquist and Sunquist's Wild Cats of the World, which gives a very broad weight range of 145 to 225 kilograms for males and 83 to 168 kilograms for females. It should be remembered that lions, like other cats, differ drastically from area to area, not as much as jaguars or leopards, but still a noticeable amount. Lions, like other animals, also tend to get very large in captivity. In his critically acclaimed book, Savage Shadow, David O'Reilly documents when he visited a safari owner in Western Australia, and on page 201, its friend the owner claimed some of his lions were around 600 pounds, or about 272 kilograms. According to a conversation I had with YouTuber Official Lion Country 2.0, where he stated he reached out to multiple reserves, the largest lion on record he's found so far is an old Kalahari male that weighed a massive 2 279 kilograms. Lion Country also has a couple videos on lions that were weighed on camera, and I highly recommend checking those out to see some pretty large males, with some well above 225 kilograms. They will be linked below in the description, by the way. While doing some skimming through Wikipedia, I found this one section on the Panthera Leo Milano Chita page, claiming a lion weighing 375 kilograms was measured, the source they list being Gugesberg's 1975 book. Now, unless I'm reading the wrong parts of the book for this video, this is not listed in Gugesberg's book. It could be due to it being listed as from a different publisher than my copy, but I'm not sure. According to an article from the website LigerWorld.com, there was a lion this big that actually existed, for those wondering. They state this monster was at the Dublin Zoo in Ireland in 1959, with some online sources reporting it had a disorder and continued to grow larger, though no photos exist of this kaiju-sized cat. Via the same article, I found this video on YouTube of two castrated male lions, which the man in the video states are theoretically the largest a lion can get, weighing at least 900 pounds minimum. I'll talk about the reason they don't have the manes later on, but I think it should be noted that these could possibly be the largest lions on record. Lions actually have longer skulls than tigers, as mentioned earlier, with a general skull length range of 26.7 to 42 centimeters for lions versus 25.3 to 37.9 for tigers. Luke Hunter lists in Wildcats of the Wild that the average is about 2 centimeters longer for males and 1.2 centimeters longer for females. 
According to Wildcats of the World 2015, male tigers range from 189 to 300 centimeters long, while lions are 172 to 250 centimeters. Although Gugersberg in his book does mention quite a few different records of lions well over 3 meters, with some over 3.3 meters. Most of these larger lions in his book aren't Barbary or Cape lions by the way, or at least not listed as such. Meaning, Barbary and Cape lions might not be as big as compared to the typical African lions you see today as they are often made out to be, but I'll talk about that some other day. The mane of lions also gives the impression of a larger animal. According to the books I'll show on screen, at least three theories exist that have arisen to explain the mane's existence. One often heard is that of protection against other lions, though you could also extend this to hyenas, dogs, and other predators. However, it might not be as effective as often made out to be by some. According to Cats of Africa, lions don't go for the shoulders and throats when in fights, and wounds to the area where the mane is present are often just as severe as wounds to the areas without the mane, so if there's any protection value for the mane, it's minuscule at best going off of Cats of Africa, despite what Wildcats of the World 2002 states that the mane could be something enemies could get their claws tangled in. It also doesn't explain why only male lions have it. Other cat species have just as lethal weaponry and just as lethal rival predators in their ecosystem, yet you don't see tigers, jaguars or leopards with manes, so it seems like if the mane has a use as protection, it's a secondary benefit and not the reason it evolved. In 2002, a study by Peyton West and Craig Packer would actually answer the question of whether the mane is or isn't used for sexual display and intimidation. The other two theories proposed for it, and the answer would be an astounding yes. The study used two life-sized dummy lions with manes that could be swapped out for others of differing length and colour. The study found that females preferred, regardless of length, darker maned males. Darker manes are a sign of higher testosterone, the dominant hormone in male animals. Testosterone equals to higher aggression and more muscle mass, meaning darker maned lions are better able to fight off immigrant males looking to take over pride. Darker maned lions were also found to have a higher survival rate for cubs and also live longer. The manes of lions tend to be much larger and more luxurious in captivity due to lions in zoos and sanctuaries having a much healthier life than their wild counterparts, promoting development. The mane can also also vary in development depending on where the lion is from. The mane starts developing typically around 6 to 8 months, but lions in hotter areas take much longer for it to develop. Cooler places also lead to lions developing much larger manes and even across the chest and shoulders. In places like Asia and Savo National Park, the manes can be very weakly developed or may not even develop at all. Much older lions also have darker manes. A very small or patchy mane in some cases can also be a sign of a sick, injured or a generally unhealthy lion. Scar was definitely a lot healthier in the original Lion King compared to the 2019 remake. I think the idea of sexual display and intimidation is pretty well supported. It should be remembered sexual display items typically develop when the animal is mature. Lions only get their manes when they are starting to reach the age of reproduction, and if they can't breed or aren't healthy, they lose it or it's weakly developed. This is clearly shown when Big Cat Rescue desexed one of their lions, linked below. The same can also be said about the two castrated males mentioned earlier. C.A.W. Googersberg in his Wildcats of the World mentions a lion that went on a rampage killing lionesses. Authorities in Nairobi National Park where this happened didn't want to shoot him and he was one of the best maned males in the park, so they castrated him instead. After some time, this mane would end up falling out and again proved that there is some sort of connection between reproductive capabilities and the mane. For those wondering, the lion afterwards would be often mistaken for a lioness by tourists, and while he was still alive he continued killing lionesses. He would later be put down when Nairobi National Park officers couldn't think of anything else to do. So, in conclusion on the mane's development, due to the social structure of lions, it allows females to be more selective of their partners, and over time sexual selection drove the development of the mane, with protection, if it is effective as a form of armour, being a secondary use. Lions also have a very strong bite force. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, a 1991 study found a 163 kg lion to have a bite of 425 kg bilaterally, while as a comparison, the same source lists a 2005 study that 
found a 200 kilogram tiger to have a bite of 307 kilograms unilaterally. Before you run off claiming lions have a stronger bite than tigers, do keep in mind I use the terms bilateral and unilateral for each bite force. Bilateral is where the bite is measured from both sides of the jaw, while unilateral is only one side. A bilateral bite can be 30 to 100% stronger than a unilateral bite from the same animal. Lions have a different humeroradial index or measurement of limb proportions to that of tigers. Tigers have one of 89.8% while lions have 98.3%, which is more comparable to cheetahs, according to Wild Castle World 2002, who have an index of 101.3%, meaning lions are more built for running than tigers are. However, that doesn't mean lions reach similar speeds to cheetahs. Numbers I've seen while writing this video range from 48 to 64 kilometers. Lions rarely ever run for long periods of time. Cats in general are built for explosive bursts of energy rather than endurance, so lions, like other cats, rely primarily on getting within close range of prey before leaping at it. According to Luke Hunter, lions reach a speed of 58 kilometers an hour and can maintain this for only 250 meters. Most chases only go for 50 meters, however. Hunts of wildebeests sometimes go for three kilometers, with one case reported going for 11, but I doubt lions actually ran that entire distance. According to Sunquist and Sunquist's Wildcats of the World, lions in the Ungaro Ungaro crater that ambush Thompson's gazelle from a distance of 7.6 meters have a good chance of catching the animal, with ambushes over 15.2 meters having zero chance of catching it. Lions are also somewhat agile for their size. Small individuals are known to flee up trees when chased by dogs or other animals, and according to Googlesburg, ones in southern parts of Queen Elizabeth National Park, Uganda, make a habit of climbing trees. It's believed they do it to escape flies in the area, such as setsi flies, which don't go into the trees. Lions are limited in tree climbing capabilities compared to other cats like leopards due to their weight, so don't expect them to be climbing with similar performance to them. According to Gugersberg, lions are excellent swimmers, with some being known to cross rivers such as the Kunene and Okovango. They've also appeared on the Ukraine Island in Lake Victoria, roughly 250 meters away from the mainland, a true testament to the lion's swimming capabilities. Contrary to popular belief, male lions can and do hunt for themselves, with roughly 60 to 87% of their meals being via their own hunts, depending on whether they are territorial or non-territorial males. Everything else is scavenged from lionesses or other predators. The diet of lions varies a lot, and like most cats, they are considered generalists. They have been recorded eating everything from dung beetles to beached whales. Lions in Chobe National Park were recorded hunting elephants from 1993 to 1996, including six adult females. There's even a report, according to Luke Hunter's Wildcats of the World, of them killing a bull elephant that had been previously injured in a fight with another bull during this period. The main diet of lions consists usually of Gemsbok, Wildebeest, Impala, Nyla, Cobb, Thompson's Gazelle, and other ungulates ranging in size from 60 to 550 kilograms. None of these are the mainstay of the diet, with the majority species differing from area to area, but all of them contribute something to it. Gugersberg states that lions have been known to also go through garbage on the outskirts of African villages, alongside in times of scarcity turned to eating rotten wood, nuts of various kinds, and fruit. Lions have also been known to commit cannibalism. So in other words, lions aren't racist, they just hate everybody and everything, even people, killing an estimated 50 to 100 people each year in remote villages. Some, upon hearing that, might begin thinking of the famous Savo man-eaters, famous for preying upon those working on a railway from Lake Victoria to Mombasa. According to Gugersberg, some authors try to pass off man-eaters as freaks akin to serial killers, though as he points out, such animals, if they were serial killers, would prey upon their own kind. As he also points out, a lot of man-eaters are confirmed to be disabled or elderly individuals who've found humans to be much easier to catch and kill. In the case of the Savo lions, at that point in time, the place was very scarce in the way of prey, meaning the lions would have welcomed the abundance of easily available prey in the form of railway workers. When it comes to the pride system, according to Cats of Africa, up until 1.5 million years ago, Africa was a much more biodiverse place when it comes to carnivores, which can be seen in an illustration of large African carnivores alive 3 million years ago, pages 42 to 43. 
Alongside that, Africa was, and still is, a very prey-dense environment. A massive carcass such as a Cape Buffalo sticks out easily on the flat plains on Africa and can't be dragged into hiding. It's believed that pressure from other carnivores such as hyenas, wild dogs and other cats such as the saber-toothed cat Homotherium forced the pride system in lions to evolve in order to better defend kills. Some of you might be asking why don't all cats do this, but the reality is, is costs outweigh the benefits, except for when it comes to lions and male cheetahs. Yeah, you might be able to take down prey easier when you have a mob of relatives with you, but cats are designed to hunt alone, and more cats means higher demands when it comes to overall calorie intake. Cats are also designed to be solitary hunters, unlike dogs that run in packs, so for most cat species, there's simply no reason to hunt or live in groups. The only reason lions can and do form prides is due to the fact lions have access to massive amounts of prey to the point the high costs of group living are easily met. In places where food is scarce, the pride structure of lions breaks down entirely and lions will go their own way, at most staying in pairs with the exception of mothers with cubs. In places where prey is very dense, allowing prides to form, lionesses benefit a lot from the pride system when it comes to raising cubs. These prides can be made up of multiple generations of lionesses. Mothers, daughters, aunts, cousins, you name it, you'll probably find it. Typically, you only get around 3 to 6 lionesses in a pride, but it is possible to sometimes get prides up to 20 lionesses. Luke Hunter points out in Cats of Africa that this pride structure is also seen among semi-wild domestic cats that are in places where lots of food is thrown out or handed to them. Basically think of these handouts and thrown out food scraps as the scaled down version of a rhino or elephant carcass. These semi-wild domestic cats go on to live like miniature lionesses, feeding each other's cubs and protecting them from infanticidal males. Getting back to lions, when it comes to males, they live in what's known as a coalition, made up of primarily related males that live together and defend territory and females in it together. These coalitions are typically smaller than prides, at around 1 to 9, though typically 2 to 5. These males will typically be ones that all left the pride at around the same time, staying together in order to have a better chance at defending themselves and territory. If they don't have any male siblings, lion males are known to team up with unrelated males in order to form coalitions. When the coalition takes over pride, only the dominant one of the coalition will breed with the females. Some of you might ask why don't all of them do it, since there are multiple females to breed with, and that's a good question. The answer is that related males that don't breed actually do still benefit from their brothers, half-brothers or close cousins breeding with lionesses, since they are still going to have nieces and nephews to carry on the bloodline. So these other males don't necessarily have to breed, since they are still getting genetics of theirs passed on anyway. Their main purpose, more or less, becomes to just help out protecting the pride from rival males. In the case of unrelated members in a coalition, they do end up sharing females whether they want to or not. When it comes to pride takeovers, the females try to fight off immigrant male or males, and to my knowledge, reports do exist of lionesses ganging up on and killing lions trying to take over the pride. If them and the possible male or males they're with fail to fight off the immigrant males, however, it does end up being a heavy cost not just for the males that got kicked out of the pride or killed, but also the lionesses when the new males start committing infanticide. The new males are not discriminatory about which cubs they kill. They kill them all if they're under the age of 18 months. The reason why is that the females don't go into heat until cubs are 18 months or older, and if you're a male lion, you could be the ruler of that pride for a week, a month, a year, or maybe the rest of your life if you're lucky. Emphasis on the lucky part. So for male lions, it's the case of kill the cubs, send their mothers into heat ASAP, breed, and hopefully raise a couple successful litters before you die or are kicked out by rival males. But even then, the new lion might not get to reproduce since their period of heat is set back for 4 months on average as a test to see if the new lion will last. No point breeding with him if he can't hold his own. Although there are cases where they become receptive within as little as 2 weeks of cub death. Male lions that do get to reproduce and raise young successfully also get to reproduce more often, with females hastening their return to estrus by as much as 3 months. One way females of most cat species try and stop infanticide is via mating with multiple males even if they might be pregnant already. This basically makes it be that when said other males see them, they think the offspring they have is their young and not another males, when in reality it could be anyone's young. Luke Hunter in Cats of Africa documents one event he witnessed 
breast of a lioness about 12 hours away from giving birth trying to impress a coalition of young males. According to him, they either weren't impressed by her or too young to understand the gestures she was making since none would mate with her and they'd kill her cubs the following day. Pregnancy for lionesses lasts 98 to 115 days with an average of around 110. Estrus lasts for 4 to 5 days and lionesses synchronise their estrus periods, leading to them giving birth within only a few weeks of one another. Lionesses on average birth about 3 cubs, but it can be as low as 1, but sometimes up to 7 in the case of one lioness in the Netherlands according to Sunquist and Sunquist's Wildcats of the World. According to a series of children's encyclopedias I have, the same also happened for a lioness in Dublin. Lionesses typically give birth away from the pride and don't rejoin until after several weeks. It's believed this is done to shelter the young cubs from play fighting with older cubs or is perhaps some sort of ancestral behaviour. Lion cubs are typically spotted, with this believed to be a genetic leftover from the forest dwelling species they evolved from. Most lions lose these spots, though it might still be vaguely visible on some adult lionesses and sub-adult males. There have been reports of spotted lions throughout history, but those will be talked about in a future video. Cubs are independent of their parents by at least 16 months and typically disperse by about 20 to 48 months, but might not breed until a year later in the case of females, and in the case of males, they rarely breed before age 5 or 6. Males that leave the pride at an older age have a better chance of survival, but don't live as long as females. Males should consider themselves lucky at age 12, since it's rare they'll ever make it to 16. Females are luckier, making it to 18 and higher in the wild, and become incapable of breeding at 15. Both can reach past 27 in captivity thanks to healthier diets and healthcare. Male cubs die more often than females, leading to a ratio of 2 to 3 females for every male according to Luke Hunter. Most females for almost all their entire life will be in the range of the pride they were born into, and sometimes they stay and mate with new males if there's a pride to take over. Males on the other hand disperse very far from their natal range, which is a typical thing you can expect of most cat species. The only difference is that with lions, females live and hunt together rather than just living next door from each other. Lions are currently considered vulnerable, though Luke Hunter states in Wild Cats of the World and several areas of its range, the lion qualifies for endangered. It's extinct in 15 African countries and possibly another 17, alongside 13 countries allowing sport hunting for trophies. Persecution by hunters via both the legal shooting of those dubbed problem animals and the layouts of poison baits and traps for bushmeat don't help either. The Asiatic population in West India was almost wiped out at one point due to unregulated hunting, which dropped them down to a horrifying 20 individuals. One source I have also states even less, at around a dozen. Luckily, they have since bounced back to 300 in the reserve they inhabit, and an approximate 100 roaming around outside it, but have been pushing into villages and other areas. According to Wildcats of the World by Sunquist and Sunquist, interviews with local people state these lions have been becoming more aggressive and have attempted break-ins on buildings such as cow sheds. Efforts have been made to relocate these lions that wander towards local villages, but some have ended up right back where they were captured. There has been compensation set up for those who lose cattle and other livestock, but at least for 2002, quite a few farmers complained about how complicated the system was, and some officials held the idea farmers would leave out sick or old camel for lions to kill so they could get compensation. Some also believe they should be able to shoot the ones dubbed problem animals. Ideas have also been proposed that some of the lions should be transported to zoos. One breeding program to preserve Asiatic lions found two of the five animals they started with were actually African lions, so there is demand for Asiatic lions for both use in breeding programs and zoos. Overall, it's believed there's only 20,000 lions left total across its range, with some more liberal population estimates saying 32,000, but either way, that is a massive fraction compared to the numbers only decades ago. Due to how cut up the African lion's territory is, this paints a much worse picture, where these fragmented populations will most likely start to feel the effects of genetic isolation if they haven't already. This paints a pretty bleak picture overall for lions, but I do recommend keeping in mind there are many conservation efforts out there, so feel free to support them or do whatever you can to help if or when possible. I asked Pam Farah the other day about donating $1,000 to them since I want to see lions and other cats thrive, but for some reason they turned me down. I'm not sure if it was me asking for a pet snow leopard or a lion's mane in return for the donation or what, but I'm sad they turned down my donation. I'm gonna go cry. I'm gonna go lock myself in the bathroom now and cry. 
For further reading, I recommend Wildcats of the World and The Wildcat Book by Mel and Fiona Sunquist, Cats of Africa by Gerald Hind and Luke Hunter, Wildcats of the World by Luke Hunter, and Wildcats of the World by C.A.W. Googersberg. Quite a few of the books for this video are also available on archive.org, so if you have an account, feel free to borrow them and learn further about lions or fact check me on anything. Alongside that, some information had to be cut from this video in order for it to not be too long, so extra information can be found in the description. Anyway, this is where I shall end this video. I originally wanted to include some stuff on white, black, red, green and blue and spotted lion cryptids, but I want to get back to the iceberg video. Anyway, hopefully you'll like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time I upload. Pardon. Lions are also somewhat agile for their size. Small individuals are known to flee up cheese. Flee up cheese. According to Googlesberg, lions are excellent slimmers with slimmers. They have also appeared in the what the fuck? The main diet of lions consists usually of Gemsbok, wildebeest, impala, nyla, cob, Thompson's gnome. Canel. Alright, let's try that again for the one billionth time. For further reading, I recommend Wildcats of the World and the Wildcat Book by Mio Miona. <laughs>